Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, a podcast on the Narrative Lectionary. I'm Rolf Jacobson. I'm Catherine Schifferdecker. And I'm Joy J. Moore. Our podcast uh, this week is uh, for Good Friday, uh, March 29th, 2024. And our text is Mark, chapter 15. And we're looking at verses 16 through 39. And uh, here we we have uh, uh, that Good Friday uh, telling of the crucifixion. Um, our uh, commentary uh, uh, reminds us of uh, what crucifixion was like in the ancient world. And uh, the text we have uh, draws us in along with, um, of course, um, Psalm uh, 22. Um, that will be the psalm uh, that uh, goes alongside with this uh, reading uh, as we uh, think of the words of Jesus crying from the cross. Um, the, uh, the scene that we have begins um, in some ways like we've already spoken of. Um, on Palm Sunday, uh, the people um, uh, lifting up Jesus as this uh, great king. And then now by the end of the week, uh, we haven't read this, but Jesus is handed over to be crucified. And in mockery, the soldiers lead him away and hail him as king of the Jews. And so we're going to keep having this uh, reminder of who Jesus is, and yet not in the way that our imagines are anticipating what it would mean for him to be the king. And I think it's important for us to read the text with that in mind. Uh, how do we keep that irony before uh, those of us who uh, are so familiar with reading this uh, simply as a rehearsal of Good Friday, which is uh, uh, the crucifixion for our salvation? But um, the drama of this event is uh, all of these nuances uh, that uh, both of what crucifixion was uh, in in uh, ancient times, and what they understood they were doing, and now what we celebrate is the reality of what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. So I th I think you're right, Joy. That there's uh, the, obviously a familiarity to this story that uh, can uh, get in the way, perhaps, of of hearing it afresh. So we we also have Psalm twenty two as as an accompanying uh, text here, uh, which Jesus quotes uh, from the cross. Elo, elo, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, "My God, My God, why have you forsaken me?" There's a I'm kind of desolation. That. What's that? <laughs> I'm glad you said that. There was a reason. Yeah, I know. I I know. <laughs> you do the Hebrew. <laughs> Or Aramaic, uh, yeah. Why, Aramaic. Uh, why have you forsaken me? The uh, one, one hook, right? One place you could you could put your sermon uh, is to dwell on that, to talk about the psalm uh, as well, uh, and to talk about the uh, uh, the 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 utter desolation uh, that the psalmist, first of all, and then Jesus uh, feels on the cross, uh, and even that. Uh, right, the 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 bystanders don't understand what he's saying. They think uh, Eli Eli means he's calling for Elijah. So there's a kind of uh, there's a kind of um, loneliness here. Uh, that's not a powerful enough word. I mean, right? Uh, forsaken abandonment, abandonment, forsakenness. Uh, to quote the psalm, uh, that I think is helpful to remind uh, us of and to remind our parishioners of. When I was, uh, when I was a teenager, I was, you know, a, a church brat. Well, I was an organist kid, right? And uh, I just, I remember even back then thinking, feeling sorry for people who came to church only on Sundays, right? Who came for Holy Week. I mean, <laughs> came on Palm Sunday and then came on Easter and missed Good Friday, right? Uh, because Easter, you don't understand Easter unless you've experienced that kind of desolation, that kind of forsakenness of Good Friday. You just, you, you know, to move from Palm Sunday and the palms and kids 
waving palms and the, you know, that kind of triumphal entry, and then to move to the Easter lilies and the candles and the lights uh, of, of, uh, and the hallelujahs of Easter morning, you, you miss the, the contrast, you miss the drama, you miss the import of what happens there. Amen to both of uh, what both you are saying. Um, I think there's different ways in, obviously, to the whole passion narrative. Um, I think one thing that's important is to not get to Easter on Good Friday. Yeah. Um, oh, yes, please. Exactly. And yep. So, so yep. It makes a lot of preachers nervous if you leave people on Good Friday um, in silence. But I think it's really important that um, the cross— and resurrection together are the revelation of God. Yes. It's not yes. just the resurrection. And that here, what we see, and we see only through imagination because we only have the, the text, but that the crucified Son of God, and the ro- so the royal language, again, uh, I talked about this uh, at, on the Palm Sunday podcast, that the, the all the royal language that starts to just drown us through the passion story beginning in chapter 11. And, and it's the key is they, the, they put the charge over him. What's the charge? The king of the Jews, the that Jews. he is the Messiah, the royal figure. And he's mocked exactly for that. And that there's something about human beings. So, so my next move, sorry, let me stop there. And then the move, right, he's mocked, let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down so that we might see and believe. Um, what does what does the cross tell us about ourselves as human beings? That the story of the crucifixion of Jesus, yeah, I think Luther said something about uh, the Christmas story. You're like, oh, if, uh, if I'd been there, I would have let Jesus be born in my house. You know, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't turn him away. Um the same is true with the crucifixion. Oh, if I'd been there, I wouldn't have put him to death. The, the, the story is telling us something fundamentally that there is a tragedy in our nature, a tragedy that leads to so much rejection of both God and each other, man's inhumanity to man. Mm-hmm. And left to our own, this is where our story leads. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. And somehow to leave it there until Sunday. And to I yeah, I think that's really powerful, Ralph. Uh, and to really and is. to talk about the, the you're talking about the theology of the cross, of course, to uh, use the Lutheran term that that this is where we see God, right? Uh, that in the in the forsakenness, in the abandonment, that God knows God in Christ knows what it is to feel that. So. To be uncomfortable with that. I, I was talking to one of our students actually at Luther Seminary yesterday, and she was saying, you know, I I understand the impulse to talk about a, a celebration of life instead of a funeral, but she said, you know, e- funerals are sad, right? <laughs> like we need to acknowledge the the sadness of it and I and the the grief of it. And I, I couldn't agree with her more, right? That it, it's okay to sit in that for a while because that's reality, right? And 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 to know that God knows that sense to, to that God is there too has been there too is a really powerful message. And when we think of this story as the ongoing story, uh, beginning with creation, um, we often talk of God in Christ understanding this feeling of abandonment, but. The reality is God has invested in humanity and humanity keeps walking out on God. Mm -hmm. God has understood this sense. If we read all of the imagery of idolatry and adultery uh, uh, through the uh, prophets, uh, God understands what it means to be forsaken all along. And if we truly want to appreciate what God is doing in Jesus for us, then we have to, as you're saying, truly experience that God, that Christ feels the emptiness that our disobedience equals. And, and, And then the grace that God would, as Jesus says, offer forgiveness. I know this is John, 
but that Jesus would offer forgiveness to those who are doing this to him. Mm. Mm. Um, if, if you don't linger in that sadness, if you don't uh, linger in that abandonment, then you don't fully appreciate um, what what Easter Sunday is all about, what the resurrection is. And when we tell this story, um, Saturday is a long day. That that silence of Saturday, because when when the disciples leave this scene, it looks like everything they've invested in the last three years is lost. And they don't know the outcome. And for us who know the outcome, not to be willing to linger in that loneliness means that we kind of don't fully enable ourselves to uh, experience the grace that God has afforded us.